Okay, um, hi everyone. I'm James. If you're new here, I'm trans and gay. I'm 16 years old. I often do YouTube videos about my life and what it is like having mental health issues, behavioral issues, and disabilities. And today I'm going to do a video, um, kind of about how I told my parents I got sexually assaulted like two years ago when I actually told them. So I'm going to do a video on that and then I'm going to also at the end do some tricks of how maybe you could um, tell your parents or someone in, that you know in your life at the end. So yeah. Um, so basically what I did was <clears throat> this is my story and this is actually my first time um, sharing it so if I get like um, a little emotional or like um, stumble for my words just because I'm thinking and I have actually filmed this video before but I have actually never even posted it so this is going to be my first time actually posting it before I saved it into my phone and I never posted it so basically it was happening for a few um, years um, by someone that did not live in my home a family friend and uh, it was like the fifth year of it happening, um, basically how I, how I got into telling the person was I was, this was when I was doing, um, online school, so e-learning, um, and I would go to an alternative school, this is at my old alternative school, but anyways, at alternative schools you kind of like meet with your social worker mandatory like once a week, you can meet with them more, but that's if you need it, and it was on like weekly session and we were talking I was talking to my school social worker and this person kept texting me and she was like um she heard the sound um of the person texting me so she was like we're we're having you're in school you should like message them and say hey I can't talk and I was like I don't want to talk to them and she was like why because like she wanted to know why I didn't want to talk to them because she thought they were my friend or something and then I explained to her that I don't I, I don't like them and the only reason why I the only reason why they're not blocked is because they're my mom's friend and she was like, Oh, you should talk to your mom about like you, um about like them and why you wanna block them and maybe she will let you block them and I was like, Well yeah, if I tell her why um why I wanna block him she um like if i want to tell my sorry i'm stuttering a lot if i want to tell my mom that i want to block him she'll ask why she was like oh well you should just tell her why and i was like that's really hard and then she was like you want me you want to talk about that and then i was like yeah um the reason why i want to block him is because he's sexually assaulting me and then she was like and then you know we got into that conversation and i kind of am happy that he texted me that day because I if I don't think if he texted me then and there I probably would not have told her probably would have not told her and then it would have still been happening so that kind of gave me the opportunity to tell that social worker of what was happening and um, so we talked about it and she gave me um, she tried helping me give she tried helping me with ways to tell my mom and basically, um, we we talked for like four days about like ways to talk to my mom, and eventually she was like starting to get worried, more worried about me than she actually was before, because originally I was gonna tell her, and she was like, "Do you want me to tell um, her myself instead of like you waiting to tell her or wanting to try to tell her, but you're never actually telling her?" And then. She, I was like yes. So then, after that school day, my mama, my mom came home from work. We had dinner, and she after dinner, she my social worker called my mom, and I remember that day. Uh, I remember that day. I remember where I was that that when that conversation. My mom was on the phone with my social worker at the time in her room. I was outside um, playing soccer with my brother because I was trying to keep my mind off of it. 
and then after I was in playing soccer, my brother my brother went inside, and my, I realized my mom was still on the phone, so I called my friend, and I talked to my friends on FaceTime, like outside, like I was sitting on the soccer ball, um, waiting for my brother, because he, he was going to come back, he was going to like, um, eat a snack and then come back or something and play with me, so I was like, hey, okay. Hey, we're having a face phone call with this friend, and like, I was like, oh my gosh, what, what if all this other stuff? Because at the time, I was worried that if I was pregnant or not. So we were like, mm -hmm. I I wasn't though. Um, just want to FYI, I wasn't. But yeah, we were like talking about that, and like that friend. Thank you. I'm going. I'm going to thank you you probably won't see this video but thank you if you see this video thank you because like that really helped keep my mind off of it and then I went inside my mom I saw that my mom was on the phone and then my mom went to go get a prescription I was you know home with I lived with my grandma and grandpa at the time too so my grandma and grandpa were home my mom went to get a prescription and then I came home and went and I went to bed and then, she, and then I, I talked to her in the morning, and we, you know, we talked because at the time I didn't give my social worker any detail, any details of in depth of what happened. I told her I was sexually assaulted, and I never told her like, like what exactly happened. So then I told my mom, like everything that happened. She told my dad because then my parents are divorced and stuff, so my dad didn't know. She told my dad. And then, then she, um, made, um, then she made, then she told the person's, um, mom, because it was a, it was a teenager that did it, so she told the mom that she had contact with, it was, it was basically my mom's friend's kid that did it, and then she took me, and then my mom and dad, both took me to the hospital. My mom drove me to the hospital, and then my dad met me in the parking lot of the hospital because my parents had divorced, so like we don't live together or anything, so we didn't drive together, you know. And then we, my dad, my mom, and me both walked into the hospital, all three of us together, and I got um, a bunch of different stuff. They ran all these different tests, um, like. HIV, um, pregnancy test, and both of those things came back negative, and then they gave me, um, they gave me, um, a shot for, like, HIV or something, or something, or something like that, and they gave me, like, a shot, I think they gave me, like, two or three, and they gave me a few shots to make sure I didn't have any of this, or no, to to like protect me from getting certain things and then i'm not a doctor so like i don't know all the terms of whatever they're all called and like what they are do i just know that i was given certain stuff my my i got paperwork so i'll my parents know what it was you know and then um sometimes they do um rape kits and stuff they didn't for me though because um Last time I was as aid, um, it was a month ago, so they didn't need to because it's there was not like stuff on me and stuff like DNA and stuff like that. So yeah, um, but sometimes they will do that. They didn't do it because of the time, and then basically, the, and then out at the hospital. They called the police. The police came to the hospital, and then um, I talked to the police. And then a um, what's it called? Detective. I was like, I don't know what it's called. A detective came to the hospital too. We talked to them, and then basically, yeah, that's what happened. Um, Then we went home, basically, and yeah, 
that's pretty much what happened and then I and then I kind of my parents obviously um didn't talk to them like told us the people not to contact me again and the people that the person that said me and then their family members and then we had a restraining order against them but yeah there's not really that much to my story but this is kind of the, the tips i'm not like a doctor or anything but these are what i recommend um obviously tell someone if it if it's your parents doing okay so my opinion, if it's your parents as a you i would not like do not absolutely not tell them because they're not because they're the ones doing it to you they're they're not going to help help you unfortunately um if it's someone in your house i mm, you could tell someone else in your house but i wouldn't recommend it because like if it's like like for example if your um dad's doing it and it's your mom and telling your mom might make the situation worse so what i would do is i would tell someone like your teacher school social worker like me or like what i did like i told my school social worker at the time uh therapist if you see like an outpatient therapist or like a friend's parent could help if I feel like if it's a family member like someone in your home doing it to you um I would not tell someone else in your home I would tell someone else, like or if like it's someone in your home I would um maybe tell like a family member that doesn't live in your home for example if it's like someone lives in your home doing it to you, you could tell someone you tell like your aunt or uncle that doesn't live in your home or like your grandma or grandpa or something. Um, yeah, basically. And one thing that I um, was gonna say is if the people you tell don't believe you, like they say, I don't believe that or that never happens, remember tell someone else. Thankfully for me, the person that I told believed me right away, but I know some people, they don't believe you, and they say that you're lying, when, if that ever happens, just say, I know what happened, um, don't say that to them, but say it to yourself, I know what happened, and then, and then tell someone else, yeah. And one day this will get better. This like I first told them like th three, three years ago, and I actually sometimes am upset with myself for not telling them sooner, cause I like it started it started when I was nine years old, and I, I told them when I was fifteen, but um, I also am like proud of myself for telling them because. There are some people who it's still happening. It's just like, like they haven't told anybody, and you know, I was one to tell, and yeah, I am overall happier since I have told them. Um, I have gotten mental health treatment. I have a therapist now, and yeah. Sometimes. I do have to remind my family members not to say their names because that can trigger me. But overall, I feel like I am a helpful, um, a happy person. And yeah. So yeah. I still am trying to get justice because I haven't talked about it much. Like, like I'm telling you, this YouTube video is the first time I have ever talked about it someone other than my um mom and my therapist and my dad i haven't really talked about this to my dad but my mom told him so like he knows what happened but otherwise it has been a interesting journey 
and for everyone who is struggling right now with telling their like they ha they haven't told their parent or like someone in their life just know i'm here for you and there, i i once was um in your situation and now i i told my mine and i am working on my healing journey and if anyone who has um sexually assaulted someone before and is watching this video just know that the person that you did sexually assault will remember what happened to them what you did to them every single every single person will remember what happened to them for the rest of their life so if you want so just so you know that's what you got got them into and they will not they will never forget what happened to them what you put them through so yes so i am thankful for that social worker i do not have that social worker anymore because i because i went to a different school um i go to a different school um i had that social worker for um fourth sixth seventh eighth ninth and tenth grade and she was wonderful and then i went to um then i had a different social worker at the school 11th grade and then halfway through 11th grade i went to a different school and that's my current school now so i do not have i do not see her anymore but i do still message her we do like chat like every month or whatever I chat with her like every month and give her like small little like updates about me and I ask her how she's doing and overall she has been a great person to me she has helped me so much and I hope you guys find someone like that like I will always remember her as the first person that I told and I will remember her as the first person who believed me so yes I hope I hope everyone has a good day. Bye.